Hello data managers. Welcome to unit 3, lesson 2, and in this case we're going to be looking at correlation and residuals and nonlinear regression. So first of all, I really hope you've completed unit test 2. Most of you did very well. I am very pleased with the results and I'm sure you'll be excited to get them back. What is coming up? So last week we started off with unit 3.1 and the scatter plots, and I gave you time to finish up the test. So since nearly everybody has then done the tests, we can now confidently move on to unit 3. So coming up today is unit 3.2, the correlation residuals and nonlinear regression lesson. And later on in this week we'll be covering some more items, and on Wednesday we will be having our weekly session. So first of all, just to remind you, scatter plots allow you to see whether or not your data has a trend. That's the beauty of a scatter plot. Um, the other thing you can use with a scatter plot is a line of best fit, fit. And if there's a line of best fit that works for your data, you can use the term correlation. Now, what is correlation? It is an apparent relationship between two variables in a set of data. So, I'd like you to take a moment to think about two terms that you're intimately familiar with, correlation and causation. So let's take a look at this case study that we've got here. So in this case, we are going to say that we've got grade 12 students and grade 1 students. Grade 12 students are pretty much adults. Grade 1 students are very close to being babies. Anyway, our observation is this. Grade 12 students are heavier than grade 1 students. And the other thing is, grade 12 students are older than grade 1 students. So we've got those two observations. We can plot that very nicely in a graph and get some pretty neat results. And then at the end, we can say there is a correlation between the weight and age of these students. This is pretty self-evident. So there are a few questions that we need to think about. First of all, does being older cause you to be heavier? Does being heavier cause you to be older? You're probably going, huh? Because you know that intuitively that neither of those is necessarily true. What's the relationship between causation and correlation? So you need to think very carefully about what those two words mean. Causation, something causes something else to happen. Correlation, it just means that two things happen to be related but you don't necessarily have a causal relationship. This is one that trips a lot of people up. It's one that I want you to start work thinking about because we will be addressing it later on as well. Okay, back to correlation. There are three types of correlation that we're going to look at. The first one on the left is the no correlation situation. There is no apparent relationship between our dependent and our independent variables. Then we have a negative correlation where it seems like the one variable goes up, the other variable goes down. And the final one is the positive correlation where both variables increase in tandem. You also need to think about the strength of a correlation. So is it strong or weak? If it's a strong correlation, it means that a change in one variable means that there is a nearly one-to-one -one change in the other variable. Weak correlation means that a change in one variable only results in a tiny little change in the other variable. So he, our first example here is that of a weak set of correlations. On the left, we have GDP per capita, that's gross domestic product per capita, in thousands of US dollars versus uh, social security expenditure in percentage. So presumably that's percent of GDP. So you can see here we have a curve of best fit, first of all. Secondly, we have a relatively weak correlation. So we look at this, you don't necessarily see a curve of best fit. When you run the data through an analysis, you end up with the curve of best fit being the most reliable descriptor for this particular data gra graph. On the right we have a different version of a weak correlation. So we've got quarterly growth in real GDP and private employment. So if you look at this you see that there is very little to no relationship between the amount of private employment and the real GDP. 
Here we have two examples of strong correlation. So you can see that all of our data points are clustered very closely to a line. So on the left we've got true water table elevation on the, uh, and on the uh, y-axis we've got estimated water table es elevation. So the, the difference between estimate and true, very little. And on the right we have experimental chemical shifts on the x-axis and computed isotropic values on the y-axis. My apologies, I'm not sure what those two terms are referring to. Anyway, it's a very nice tight correlation and in this case we have a negative correlation. And some other terms that you've no doubtedly seen in the content. We have coefficients of, of determination. So first of all we have a coefficient of determination and secondly we have a deter coefficient of correlation. The determination coefficient is called R squared. This is something you will see very frequently in statistics. Um, and it is the percentage of variation from one variable that gets explained in the variation of another. So this is a very important number to come out of an analysis. Uh, you also have a coefficient of correlation, again a fairly important value. So it shows you two things. It shows you the direction, so it's positive or negative, uh, whether it's uh, sloping up or down, and it also shows the strength of relationship. So typically you are going to see R squared values and you'll also hear something along the lines of statistically significant. If something is statistically significant it means that it's a real relationship. If it's not statistically significant um, you have to take any graph with a grain of salt because it could just simply be random chance that you're looking at a nice coefficient of determination or correlation but if it's not statistically significant um, what do you, why are you looking at it in the first place? Later on in the course we will touch upon statistically significant and what it means in greater depth. Um, the last thing is, uh, here we've got this neat concept of residuals. So when you graph your line of best fit, so you draw your line of best fit, here we have our variable y and our variable x, and then we've got these vertical lines those vertical lines represent the distance between any data point and the corresponding spot, the corresponding x-axis um, x spot on the line. And when you add up the magnitude of all those distances, the vertical magnitude that is, you get this thing called a residual. And then on the right hand side um, we take those residuals, plot them as a graph independent of the original graph and all we're doing is doing the plus or minus. So ideally all of your residuals should be very close to the zero to the um, x-axis. So just a few more comments before we finish. This is the content for this particular lesson. Unit 3, Activity 2, Correlation Residuals and Nonlinear Regression. So when we go through the content you'll see that it basically covers what I just did in the video. I already have a video in here investigating correlation with technology. So that is investigation number one. So investigation number one I did it using a YouTube video and um, Google Docs and Microsoft Excel. Now there are a few more investigations. There's investigation two and three. I am going to turn those into separate YouTube videos so make sure that you check the rest of the content and, and the links nearby. Um, I would like to go through those separately so that they're a nice tight little package. Anyway, this is the end of this particular lesson. Do check out those two, those three additional videos for each of the individual investigations.